And our keynote speaker is Patrick Romsek. Patrick Romsek himself, but also he is from Cisco. And for those of us who were in the business room yesterday, Patrick got up and spoke. First of all, he is a brilliant speaker, so you're just going to really enjoy this. He's a man who's like me, he moves around. But what was really interesting listening to Patrick yesterday, he speaks like a business leader and a, and a really strong, strategic person within business, but he also uses his heart. And what's really interesting is this work that he's speaking about is not actually his role. He decided to do this himself because he cared passionately about it. These are the evangelists, these are the champions, and these are the leaders that we need to cultivate. So can you put a big warm round of applause to Patrick Romsek? Thank you, Carolyn. I'll never live up to that introduction. So I want you to have very low expectations. This will be the worst presentation of the day. And I'm not going to sit up there like Henry Kissinger, so I hope you don't mind. I'm going to walk around a little bit. Um, as, uh, as Carolyn said, um, my name is Pat Romzik, and my day job is I lead cloud strategy at Cisco Systems. Uh, my nights and weekends job, though, is I'm a passionate advocate for people with disabilities and specifically about how we can transform their lives uh, using employment. Judy talked a little bit about the difference it makes in people's lives when they have a job. Uh, we all know that. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about a project I started at Cisco about a year and a half ago that we call Project Life Changer, self-explanatory. Uh, I'll talk to you a little bit about what we were trying to do, uh, the problem we're trying to solve, what we achieved, uh, and more importantly, kind of where we go from here. But as a little bit of backdrop, in case you don't know Cisco, Cisco is the worldwide leader in telecommunications and collaboration technologies. We're in virtually every country of the world. Uh, we like to think that we powered the internet. Uh, but um, beyond that, Cisco is a company with great heart and great culture. And Cisco enables people like me, in my role, to do things outside of my day job. And so about a year and a half ago, as I said, I started a project at Cisco to endeavor to employ people with disabilities using technology as an enabler. And uh, I've done a number of things outside of my normal job. I'm involved in, a, in the not-for-profit community, and I'm most proud of the fact that I'm a special needs parent. Uh, my son Andrew is my inspiration. And I know the difference it makes for Andrew when he does something worthwhile, the esteem that it, that it provides him. So I, I became aware of the horrible situation around employment and thought maybe technology is a way that we can solve this. So, I don't know how many of you know this, these are US statistics at the top, but employment of people with disabilities in the world is awful, tragic, unacceptable in a civilized world is the way I would describe it. 80% of the people in the world with a disability don't work. 50% of the people in the world with a disability that have gone and gotten a four-year college degree don't work. That's unacceptable. So the thought we had was, can we elevate some of these folks by using technology as a way to employ them? At Cisco, we use telecommunications equipment every day. I work out of my home a couple days a week. I meet with people all over the world in my day job using telepresence. Why couldn't a person with a disability use technology to work in a way that's flexible and works for them? That was our original premise. So what we did was we looked at the landscape across the world and recognized that there are many places in the world that have workforce targets for people with disabilities. Many of these countries, I won't tell you which ones, we don't meet the workforce targets, and I found out Cisco was paying penalties in these countries. Local general managers in some of these countries just simply paid the penalties rather than meet the workforce targets. Again, unacceptable. So the idea that we had was to use collaboration technology coupled with accessibility capabilities to enable a person to work anywhere to work from home two days a week if they needed to, to work from home full time if they needed to, to have accessible technology to do whatever they needed to do and work on an equal level and an equal platform with everyone else. That's what we aspired to do. And our vision was work is something you do, not a place that you go. Work is something you do, not somewhere you go. That was our original idea. So we used video and collaboration technology. We, 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 we identified specific roles that we thought we could hire people into at Cisco. 
We identified four major employment centers, Bangalore, India, Krakow, Poland, Brussels, San Jose, our headquarters, as well as um, Sao Paulo, Brazil, and we hired people. We identified positions, we hired them into jobs, we let them work virtually, and the results were amazing. We've now hired about 60 people. Their productivity is more than twice the productivity of their coworkers who don't have disabilities. I'll give you an example of the, the project we did in Brazil, or excuse me, in Bangalore. But we saw this everywhere, and we heard this yesterday from a couple of the speakers when they talked about the productivity impact. So while people thought initially this project was sort of a social justice, you know, charity, be, charity work, oh, let's make sure we, we hire some of these folks, it's the right thing to do. It's the right thing to do for them, but it's the right thing to do for our business too. And that's what we proved in this project. So of course, once we had success, we had more success. And all of a sudden, business leaders thought, this is not only a good thing to do, it's actually really good for our business. There's millions of dollars of potential cost savings to Cisco by not having to pay penalties in some of these countries, and there's billions of dollars of brand equity, what I call brand equity. A company like Cisco, customers buy from us in part because of who we are, not just what we do. So the brand potential for us was pretty significant. We've been recognized, fortunately, through some innovation awards. This speaks to the culture and the soul of Cisco. Cisco had an innovation contest a year ago, 1,100 entries from 2,000 employees worldwide, and out of all of those entries, this project was identified as the top innovation project at Cisco. So it speaks to the fact that this is not just something good to do and good for people, it's actually good for business. Let me give you an example. So in Bangalore, India, like many technology companies, we have a technical center. And our technical assistance center is where you get routed to if you have a problem with a Cisco product. And somebody on the phone answers your question and tries to help you, just like most other tech companies. So we hired initially a handful of, of uh, visually impaired, blind uh, folks to work in Bangalore in our technical assistance center. So think about how hard it is to be a technical engineer at Cisco and you're blind. We provided them screen readers, we gave them the capability of working in a way that was flexible for them, and the results were amazing. Their productivity, the blind engineer's productivity, was more than twice the productivity of their coworkers who were not blind. Why is that? People have asked me, well, why is that? Well, it's because people with disabilities spend their entire lives overcoming barriers. Their entire lives. They're overachievers. Character traits are, are part of who they are and what they do. And character traits, as we all know, are the things that make us successful. It's not what we know. It's not where we went to school. It's who we are. Well, these people had a drive and integrity. They got along with people. They were committed to their success and their team's success. Productivity doubled, turnover <laughs> went down, error rates went down, and it was a great success story. These people worked really hard, and they raised the bar for their entire work group, which now, by the way, has overall, their overall productivity of this group went up because of the fact that we hired these folks. We hired a few, then we hired a few more. We've now hired 38 people in Bangalore to do these kinds of roles. And we've hired people across the company. And what we learned was there is a massive talent pool that is invisible to most companies of qualified people that want to work. Contrary to popular belief, most of these folks absolutely would rather have a job than be on public assistance. You have to match the talent with the opportunity, though, because many of these folks don't work. You can't look for a black belt with 12 years of experience living in San Jose. Those are not going to necessarily be people with disabilities because they probably haven't worked. So you have to look, match the talent with the opportunity. What we did is we focused on early in career roles, entry level roles in our technical center, in accounting, in finance, and legal. You need partners to make this work because we couldn't find the talent pool. And we used many of you to help us. Executive leadership is absolutely essential. You need evangelists because a hiring manager will always take the path of least resistance, at least at Cisco, because they're in a rapid-paced environment. 
And they're typically, because of it takes an extra step or two to hire folks with disabilities, they probably won't take that extra step or two. So leadership is really important. And process change is important as well. The HR organization has to embrace this as a new way of doing things. But more importantly, what we found is while this was great success, I still feel it's the tip of the iceberg. You know, Cisco's a company of 70,000 employees. We have a long way to go. But one of our biggest challenges is finding employable talent. Big talent pool, lots of these folks, and Judy was talking about this, lots of these folks don't have the requisite experience or skills that we might be looking for. So while we had success, we think we can have even more success, and that kind of brings me to the next evolution of Life Changer, which we're working on now. These are U.S. stats, but they represent the same story all over the world. Did you know that in the United States, while it's 13% of the population, only 60% of people with disabilities graduate high school? 20% go to college, 16% graduate college. These numbers are all less than half of the normal, regular population. At the end of the day, if you took 100 people with disabilities, a random sample of 100 people with disabilities, one out of 100, one out of 100 would have a four-year college degree, any kind of full-time work experience, and any kind of discipline that we call STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. That's a very small talent pool. So what can we do about it? What we can do about it is we can try to focus on the 99, not just to find the one out of 100, but what can we do about the 99 to create employable skills for them to get jobs at Cisco and at Cisco Partners and all of the companies of the world that hire technology people. That's what we're working on now. We call it Life Changer Academy. Cisco has a networking academy. There's 9,000 network academies in the world. They, we have a million students a year that go through our academy. It is not focused on people with disability. That's what we're focused on changing. So our plan is to create a, an academy without barriers that allows people with disability to attend an educational program that results in certification that ultimately results in employment and do it the same way we hired these people, in a way that works for them, whether it's working from home or it's going to class or doing both. That's what we're planning on doing now. So we've learned a lot. Um, we're now systematizing this across Cisco and making this mainstream in what we do. We're trying to drive thought leadership because we really believe that not only will this work at Cisco, this will work in many companies. Technology enables us to do things differently. We're trying to build a global supply chain of talent and create awareness of not only the, the challenges, but the opportunity that this pool of untapped talent represents in the world. And we think at the end of the day, this is a unique opportunity and a unique time to positively impact not only our workforce and our business results, but people's lives. This video, and I'm not going to show the video, is a gentleman on the right. He's one of the blind engineers in Bangalore. And when we started this project, we said, if we can change one person's life, it's all worth it. And I got a video, this video, a couple months ago, and he says in the video, this project transformed my life and gave me opportunities I could never have imagined. It was all worth it. So we think the opportunity is huge to expand the talent pool, to give companies access to a new, a new pool of talent that they haven't tapped into using technology as a way. In the process, it builds our brand equity and recognizes Cisco and helps us realize our vision as the company that's going to change the way the world works, lives, plays, and learns, which has been our vision for 30 years. But in the process, we have an opportunity to benefit everyone. Our employees, our workforce and our productivity, our overall business results, government, society, and ultimately, people's lives. And what greater legacy do we have than doing that? So I'm going to just close by thanking you for letting me talk. I hope you found this useful and interesting. If you want more information, let me know. And I would challenge all of you to think, not just how we do what we did yesterday better, but how we do something different and provocative to fundamentally change the trajectory of this challenge, which we all know about, which fundamentally hasn't changed in a long time. Now is the time where we can really make a difference. Thank you. Thank you. Patrick, you, you wouldn't come back here just for a quick question, would you? Sure. Thank you. See, he's great, wasn't he? Um, I have a question very quickly because 
It, it is of interest. So you say that Cisco, what you do in Cisco can be done in other companies. So is there a role for Cisco in helping convene other companies or sharing best practice, or is that something Cisco are doing? Yes, there is. Um, great question. I've been asked this a couple times. We believe that this is something that could be applicable in most companies. The fine kinds of people we hired are knowledge workers. How many of you all have accountants, legal people, finance people, technical people that sit at their desk all day? Technology is pervasive and available now, not just from Cisco, but Microsoft's here and other companies can do the same thing. So absolutely, I believe the opportunity is more pervasive than just Cisco. We haven't talked a lot about it because, frankly, we wanted to prove the results ourselves first. But absolutely, there's an opportunity for us to share best practices and to learn from each other in a way that really has an impact. And can I just pick up on something that we talk about a lot? So this co company's obsession nearly in getting it perfect before they go out. But no company can get it perfect, right? So mm -hmm. can we start encouraging companies to even start talking about starting the journey together with each other? That's a great point, Carolyn. So we did a pilot. We didn't, we didn't have this all figured out and did a bunch of analysis yeah. and said, okay, let's go. And it's, you know, we had flow charts and, and that's not what we did. We did a pilot. In the technology world, it's called DevOps, right? You develop something, mm. you try it, you test it, you refine it, you develop it more. That's how, that's how it works in the technology world. We use yeah. the same principle here. Iterative design, iterative development. We did a pilot, we figured out what worked for us, yeah. we refined it, we expanded it. And we could do the same in any other company. Any other company could do the same thing. The, the key is to do something different. Exactly. And not accept the status quo. Exactly. Well, thank you very, very My much. Pleasure. Massive round of applause for Pat. Thank you.